Yo, what's good, y'all? We back with a vid, obviously. This is a different type of vid, though. It's a raw and honest Q&A for all the questions that people were asking me. I did a, a little poll on my IG. I uh, did a little vid on TikTok and told y'all, ask me anything. We're going we gonna to keep it real. We're going to keep it 100 per usual. You know what I'm saying? So this is the vid. Let's get right into it. Okay, so starting off, um, we got how has the adjustment been after basketball? And, you know, what is your everyday life like now? This is a good question. For those of y'all that don't know, I recently stopped playing college basketball. Like, not stopped playing for real because my eligibility was up. But I played my last college game like a month and a half ago. And the transition, honestly, has been smooth. Like, it's different, but it's smooth. Like, I played basketball my whole life. Y'all see my profile pictures, me at one years old with a ball like this. The typical, like, my pop put that ball in my hand before I could even walk. So, and the proof is there on the profile picture on my IG and on YouTube. So, no cap in that. Um, you know, I grew up playing basketball, and it's been a great journey. You know what I'm saying? It's been a great journey. I'm so blessed for the people I've met, the memories I've created. Um, you know, just what, I, like, what the game has given me is just something I can't even put a price tag on. Like, it's helped better my life in so many ways. It's part of the reason why. You know, I do the content that I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? I was able to go to college practically for free. And then, um, yeah, it moved me out to California. You know what I'm saying? It took a lot of work to get out here. But so, yeah, the game is great, bro. Like, it's a tool, though. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of people just ball is life, you know, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. But you got to just basketball is just like anything else, bro. Like, you got to use it. You don't let it use you. You know what I'm saying? Same with money, same with a job, whatever. It's like. I got all I can out of basketball, bro. Like pretty much free to like, you know what I'm saying? Free tuition, free college. Um, like I said, halfway across the country, living life I always dreamed of, um, brand deal opportunities and stuff like that. But you know what I'm saying? I did think it was time for it to come to an end. You know, I always thought I'd be playing overseas, you know, try to go for like G League or something growing up. But I just don't love the game no more, bro. It's, it's sad to say, cause it's been such a big part of my life, but I really just don't love basketball no more. You know what I'm saying? That was kind of evident my last season. Like I still played well, but I was nowhere near like what I could have been playing. Cause I just, I just fell out of love with the game, bro. I'm just so much more interested in, um, you know, like fashion, not even just fashion, but my, my specific brand building that business, you know what I'm saying? And some other things. So, you know what I'm saying? Any advice for y'all hoopers or football, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Use the game, use the game. Don't let it use you. Everyday life now, everyday life now is smooth too, bro. Like I'm living life on my own terms. Like there's not a price tag for that, bro. Like I can go to the gym whenever I want to go to the gym. I can sleep in whenever I want to sleep until like, and I don't really just sleep until noon just because, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? Having that freedom to go to a coffee shop whenever you want, go to the beach whenever you want. Like it's bro, the peace that you have with that, at least for me is, is huge, bro. Like that time and location freedom is more important than money to me. Like I'd rather make four to five K a month, you know what I'm saying? To be able to pay my baseline bills, but be able to do whatever I want to do every day and have the opportunity to work on things that I actually enjoy than make 30 K a month. You know what I'm saying? Working a job that I just hate, you know, clocking in 12 hours a day. Both my parents were in corporate America. I just kind of knew, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't really the route I wanted to take, even though I definitely would be good at that type of stuff. Cause it's like a lot of political stuff. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. And building on that question, we had two similar ones right here where it's like, why didn't you finish school? Why didn't you finish college? And you know what I'm saying? Like, why couldn't you have just finished and then continue with the brand? These are all valid questions, bro. Like the route I'm taking is not for everybody. And I'm not saying it's a good thing necessarily. Like I'm never gonna tell somebody to drop out of school. Bro, I dropped out, I had, I still had a semester left after this spring semester because when I transferred, my credits got kind of messed up. So either way, even though I had a 3.9 GPA coming into the school year this year, um, yeah, your boy was gifted in the classroom, not just playing. I mean, I'm smart, but like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm more resourceful than like actually like smart. But I mean, like I said, man, time freedom, location freedom, like unless you run a brand yourself, you don't really understand what goes into running a business, bro. Like, especially in the early stages, I'm a one man band. Like my girl be helping me with certain things, you know what I'm saying? Like content or packing orders, you know, or I'll run something by her. But bro, it's all me. Like designing all the designs or coming up with the ideas for all the designs. 
you know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, packing and shipping, that's that's mostly me. My girl helps me with that. But I mean, marketing, that's mostly all me. Talking to manufacturers, you know, throughout the night, every day, that's all me. Customer service, that's me. You know what I'm saying? Like making sure everything's just pristine, like inventory, that's me. You know what I'm saying? The money that's going in the brand and you know, the accounting part, that's also me. Bro, once you realize how much goes into it, like you don't have that much time in your day to kind of like be doing shit that you don't really love to do. Not love to do, but it's, I don't have the time to put towards something that's not benefiting that. You know what I'm saying? The brand is the biggest thing for me right now. So it's like, I'm gonna be sitting in class learning about something that really is not that applicable to my life. And I have to study for all that. I'm like, bro, I couldn't do it no more. Like midterms was coming up. I'm like, dog, like, I'm about to really study for some stuff that I'm not even gonna use in life. That's not even really that relevant to my business. Cause I was a business major too. And it's like the stuff I'm learning in class really isn't that applicable. Like I said, it really wasn't that relevant to me running my own brand. Like me running my brand is my business degree. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm able to get real life experience doing the actual thing that everybody wants to replicate. Like you can't replicate running a business bro in class. No entrepreneurship class is gonna teach you that. You know what I'm saying? You actually gotta put your, your balls on the line. You gotta put your money on the line and your reputation on the line and everything on the line and then see what works. So you're probably gonna get blown out the first time to be honest. Like bro, I remember my first couple of drops where I really didn't sell shit. Like I'll tell you about like my first drop, I sold, I was doing graphic tees, bro. Like like everybody else, you know, bootleg graphic tees. I sold probably like 20 t-shirts, my first drop. Second drop, I sold like 25. Dog, when I switched to, and honed in on the stuff I really wanted to sell, like, or, you know, go kind of with the brand name, GPMW, God's playing my work. I switched from like bootleg graphic tees to like something to do with like the faith aspect. Dog, my first drop, I sold one hoodie, one. I only ordered 50, but I sold one hoodie, dog. Like. When I sold one hoodie, bro, like I was so disappointed, but that really just like most people probably gonna quit. When I sold one hoodie, dog, like that really just ignited the fire. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a I'm a competitor, dog. I'm a I'm a competitor. Any of my teammates can vouch. Like when I sold one, I'm like, oh, I'm extra locked in now. Like there's no way I'm going out sad like this. So I ended up actually donating those hoodies this year, like a year and a half later, just because I'm like, one, looking back on it, the design was not good. Like that shit was ass. The quality was there. The design was ass. The colorways was pretty ass. Like didn't really market them that well ass. Like it was just a learning process, but main point full circle. If you really want to be great at something like you got to put hella time into it. I'm not really willing to dedicate my time to school or anything else for that matter. That's not adding to my, my brand or my, my grind or my life, you know? So next up we got the question how do you stay so consistent um i don't really know i feel like that's kind of like an intrinsic thing you know what i'm saying like you're gonna be naturally you're gonna have a natural proclivity to the things that you're interested in so for me it was always basketball growing up nobody outworked me like i had some i know some dudes i know some homies that went to the went to the league like they don't put in work more work than i did just being real, like nobody outworked me, bro. I was in the gym twice a day, three times a day, five in the morning, midnight, didn't matter. Like I'm a gym rat or I was a gym rat. No different than like what I'm doing with business or content now, you know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to hone in content wise and you know what I'm saying? Go at that every day. Um, but the brand, I'm doing stuff for the brand every day. And the consistency I feel like just comes from me actually being passionate about what I do. It's hard to be consistent on some stuff that you don't really care about, bro. That's what I was just talking about with the school thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care about it. Not because it's not important to most people. Like, yes, I get the value of having an education. You need to be educated. I'm highly educated. I just know school in that traditional format, just sitting there while somebody just talks to you for two hours wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's not saying, once again, I'm not encouraging nobody to drop out of school. I'm not encouraging nobody to not take their grade seriously, especially if you're in high school, middle school and all that. Like, bro, like... You should, you should easily be passing your classes and stuff. College, you know what I'm saying? You gotta really decide if it's for you. Either way, I wasn't really consistent at all this past semester, dog. Like, I'm not even gonna give out the number, but my GPA for the fall semester of this year was the lowest I ever got. And I'm not talking about like low, like, oh, I averaged a three nine and I had a three four. Like, I'm talking about low, like low, low. Like, I'm not gonna say it right now, but 
that shit was low, but I don't even feel no type of way because I knew it wasn't important because I was going all in on my brand and I was going all in, you know what I'm saying, on the basketball season. Um, and right now I'm going all in on my brand and a couple other projects I'm working on. So I'm just staying consistent because I actually love what I do, you know, and it's like, it's that simple. When you love what you do, bro, like no corny shit, it's like I wake up, like I genuinely want to do this. There's some annoying things with the brand too, bro. Like there's a lot of like nitpicky shit, details, shit doesn't go my way, but I'm willing to solve it and figure it out because it's something I love to do. And like I said, it's corny, but to me, it makes sense. If you don't love to do something, is you're not going to be consistent. Or if you are, it's like, that's how you just get your soul kind of grinded down, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You see people clocking in jobs they hate. Maybe you got to do what you got to do for a minute. But if you do that for a long enough time, you know what I'm saying? That's how people start developing a lot of, you know, mental disorders, depression, all that type of stuff, because it's just soul draining. So I'm saying don't be consistent in stuff that you don't like to do. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do. Don't be consistent in it. Be consistent in shit that you actually want to do and, you know, some, something that's actually, um, you know, worth something to you. So, yeah. Uh, Next question. What made me start my clothing brand? Honestly, bro, I'm a hustler and I was broke and I needed some bread. I'm not going to lie. There's no story. I'm going to sell you about how much I love clothes or how much I did love clothes. And I always wanted to go to fashion school and I was studying Rick Owens. Bro, I didn't give a fuck. No lie. Like, bro, I was looking up stuff like I already had experience running a brand, not running a brand. I was a co-owner of a brand. I don't even know if I call it a brand. Honestly, it's more like glorified drop shipping. I ain't even going to get into that story. That's for another day. But I had experience, prior experience, you know, running ads and stuff like that. I'm like, I need to find a way I can make money while I'm a college athlete. And once again, time, freedom, you know, with practice and workouts, I don't have, I didn't really have the time to get an actual job, nor did I really want to, but I really didn't have the time to, you know, be clocking in at a place because my schedule was always moving and basketball is my number one priority. So, um, and I also knew that I wanted to build something that I could make more than like 15 an hour, like no disrespect on that type of shit. Like you do what you gotta do. Like back in high school, I was working, I worked at a burger restaurant, bro, flipping patties and cleaning bathrooms for seven seventy five an hour. I don't even know if that was legal, but that's another story as well. I got a lot of stories, but regardless, I just wanted to make quick money. And I found out very fast, you don't start a clothing brand to make quick money, at least if you want to be here for a while. You know what I'm saying? I, I was doing graphic tees, bro. Like I was doing graphic tees. I didn't even really wear hella graphic tees. Like I don't even like celebrity culture. Like I'm such a... I don't really give a fuck about any celebrities, bro, being real. Like, I admire people's work, but I'm not even a celebrity type dude. And I started a celebrity graphic tease. Like, that's what I started with. How do you think that worked out? Yeah, exactly. Sold maximum of 25 shirts on a drop. And that was it. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, like I said, I think it was a competitive side, but I also think it was God working through me. Like, yo, if this is something you actually want, then you have to learn the steps. But there's no shortcutting. There's not. There's no shortcutting in life for real, bro. Like, and if you do get blessed with like a, a crazy amount of money up front or some success early, you're probably going to cough it all up, bro, if you don't really deserve it. And that that's what happened with my first brand, honestly, back when I was like 18, 19. You know, you in over your head, you know, you don't really know how to run a business at all. You don't know how to handle money at all. You don't really know what you're doing at all. You don't have an identity. You're going to end up getting flatlined, bro. So it's like for me, I started my brand because I'm like, I had that bad taste left in my mouth and I'm like, I want to do it my way. This time and i'm gonna be successful with it it's been one hell of a ride already it's pulling up on two years soon and it's like i'm just now getting started like that's how long it took for me to get an identity granted too because i was locked in on basketball and school at the time it's like if you don't put all your time towards something you're gonna move at a slower rate i think i could have been where i'm at now faster you know if i had the time but being a college athlete especially when i was playing d2 and all that type of stuff like that was my main priority you really didn't have a whole bunch of time to be doing all the things I just explained that takes around the brand. So, yeah. We have another question related to basketball. I touched on this a little bit, but I think it um, it deserves some further explanation. Somebody asked, at what moment did you realize you no longer, uh, you no longer wanted to pursue basketball or like loved it or whatever? I don't know, this is kind of a deep question, but I don't think it was a specific moment, man. I think I just kind of got burnt out. Like when you work so hard at something, like I was like, like I said, going to the gym two or three times a day, no no lie, no cap, like two to three times a day, weights, training, film, you know what I'm saying? It, everything, coaches, you know what I'm saying? Like all that type of shit. It's like, you eventually get to a point, I mean, maybe it was just me, but I got to a point where it's just like, 
I kind of achieved everything I wanted to achieve, bro. Like, I'm not going to lie. In high school, I was not good. Like, I was not good. Like, I played varsity one year, my senior year, bro. Like, that's it. Like, I was at junior on JV. Like, that's embarrassing as hell. I still remember. I feel like that really forged my personality, kind of, because that shit was so embarrassing, bro. Especially in front of the shorties and all that, bro. I was so embarrassed. So embarrassed. Like, there's a lot of things that went on, too family-wise behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying, that led to my decision of playing basketball in high school. And I'm trying to prove certain people in my family wrong and all that, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to prove, you know, people in the city, like I'm I'm nice, you know, like you spend all your time in the gym and you playing JV, bro, so embarrassing. So regardless, like, you know, basketball has been a huge part of my life. I wasn't always good at it. I didn't really get any recognition from it. I never played on no star, you know, AAU team or nothing, bro. Like I was playing like, B level, you know what I'm saying? I was I was playing local AAU tournaments. I was never in uh, the Peach Jam, EYBL shit. I was never on the Adidas circuit or nothing. Like I was severely overlooked and I was nice. I got to a point where I was nice my senior year, especially in the later part of my junior year. And by that time it's like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know how it is, it's political too. It's like, if you weren't kind of like a highly touted freshman or sophomore that was on varsity, you know, getting bucks. It's kind of like, I mean, you playing JV as a junior, sorry, nothing I can really do for you. So, you know, it was tough, but that grind that I put in, bro, and then I went to JUCO. So after high school, I played one year at high school. I had no offers. I finished my senior year averaging like 16 or 17 a game. The team wasn't good though. I had no offers, no AAU hype, none. I get, you know, I, my dad played in the same JUCO conference I played in. And so he knew an old coach or like an old head from that conference. He put in a word to a couple of the JUCOs and I didn't get an offer from that. So it's not even like I got plugged with an offer or nothing. But he reached out to one of them, North Iowa Area Community College, bro. <laughs> Nyack, all the memories I got there. They reached out to me, the coach, Coach Mole, solid ass dude, man. Coach Winters, all them solid. And they were like, yo, you can come down um, for open gym. And basically this open gym is gonna prove whether I get a scholarship or not, whether I even make it on the team. So I go down there for the open gym. And I'm not gonna lie, I caught fire, bro. And to prove my work ethic, before I went down to open gym at like two or 2.30, I was in the gym that morning at nine o'clock on the shooting gun, bro, at my high school. I got a probably like 405 shots. Cause I'm like, I'm already gonna be hot. Like it's a little two hour drive from the crib, but I'm like, I'm already gonna be hot by the time I get down there. I get down there. I was busting ass. I'm not gonna lie. I was busting ass. I was, I was making my shots. You know what I'm saying? I was talking, doing all the things that coaches want. I earned a scholarship, and you know, I spent two years at Nyack, you know, grinding, bro. Shout out to Coach Jay, my first year. Shout out to Coach Josiah Lee, my second year. I was with them, grinding. Some of the best development coaches I've ever had. The two best development coaches I've ever had by far in terms of like what they put into players, you know what I'm saying? And dudes who want to get better. I'll be in there 6 a.m., 7 a.m. every day, you know what I'm saying? Then we stay up to practice sometimes too and get it in. So my first year at Nyack, I didn't even play for real, bro. <laughs> like once again, bro, I went from not playing in basically all high school until my senior year. And then I have to start all the way back over at JUCO because the players I was playing behind my first year, they was just, they was they was better. They had more experience. They was more athletic. You know what I'm saying? They they were just better at that time. And I had to take a back seat. I was playing like 10, 12 minutes a game. I averaged five points a game my first year at JUCO, bro. Like, y'all can go nyack.com or whatever. You can see the stats. I averaged five points, one rebound, one assist a game. And I got sick during that year. I don't know if it was COVID or what, but I was sick, so sick. Like, towards the second half of the year, I missed like, I don't even know how many games, but it was crazy. I lost like 20 pounds, whatever. Fight through that adversity, put in a, a good, solid summer worth of work. And that summer, bro, between my freshman and my sophomore year of college is when I really took off. I don't know what it was. Like, I was just back home at Lifetime Fitness playing against the older dudes I've always been playing against since in high school, downtown, Lifetime in Minneapolis. Them old dudes used to talk so much shit to me. They used to bust my ass when I was like 14, 15. I came back down when I was like 18, 19. That summer turned up turn up and when I got that little nod of approval from the old heads at the gym that's when I knew I was like okay I'm like that you know what I'm saying I'm nice these are the dudes who a couple years ago didn't even want me to they wouldn't even pick me up and pick up basketball like you know what I'm saying I had to damn near beg to get on the court to play you know and it's like now I'm coming down busting ass and getting the nod like oh where you go to school at oh you're nice you know whatever so at that point I was like yeah yeah and that confidence transferred um uh, you gotta think too this is during COVID and all that type of shit too so it's like when all the gyms were closed, 
you know, for that four month period, at least in Minnesota, all the gyms are closed. I was training with my dad in the cold ass weather in like the springtime. Um, me and my dad would just be at the court for an hour at the park. You know what I'm saying? And anybody who knows Minnesota, bro, you know it's cold, especially spring. It's like 40 to 60, maybe 70 degrees, but it's like windy. It didn't matter. We was there and I was always a three point shooter, you know? So because we playing outside and the wind's blowing, I really developed my mid range game, my, you know, getting to the basket, getting to the cup and all that. And, you know, I thank my dad, you know, for the sacrifice he made because he didn't have to be out there with me. But I, while everybody was at home chilling because of COVID or whatever, doing whatever they was doing, gyms are closed, dudes was complaining, was plenty of work. Bro, I come back my second year, I averaged five my first year. That second year, bro, I averaged almost 19 points a game and I'm a Juco All-American. Like, you know what I'm saying? Juco All-American. We went from averaging five a game to Juco All-American. So long story short, I didn't even mean to say all that, but long story short, when you put in all that work and then I got all the offers I, I wanted, bro. I remember, my bad, after that sophomore year, I become an All-American, my phone is hot. My phone is hot. I'm going on visits and shit, bro. Like I have about 50 uh, coaches calling me and stuff. Like I still got them saved on my phone. I can show y'all like, I went from getting no recruiting news, nothing. I'm worried about if I'm gonna even be able to play at the next level. Like, did I just waste time going to the middle of fucking nowhere in Iowa? But nah, it eventually worked out. I recruited, I get recruited from a number of schools, mostly all high level D2s, but these is high level D2s. Like Mankato State, they just won the D2 national championship like last week. I ended up deciding on Azusa Pacific because I always wanted to get to California. So my point is, and at APU, you know what I'm saying? I went through a little bit of adversity there as well. Not a little bit, I went through adversity there as well. Grinded through that, finished the best I can. My main point, bro, when you put in that much work to something and you finally are able to accomplish what you wanted to accomplish in terms of getting a full ride scholarship to a place that you want to be, getting to the location you want to be, et cetera. It's like, once I did that, bro, I was like, dog, I put in so much, I put so much into this game. It's like, I don't really want to start over again. You know what I'm saying? Going overseas, you know, unless you come in from Duke or a high major, like you go overseas, where a lot of overseas dudes is making a thousand a month or less. You know what I'm saying? You got your housing paid for or whatever. You're making a thousand dollars a month or less or two thousand dollars a month or less. And it's a grind. I'm like, dog, I've had to start over at every, excuse my language. I had to start over at every fucking level I've been at, bro. Like every fucking level from middle school or elementary school all the way to, you know, D2, NCAA tournament team at the D2 level. Like I'm like, dog, I am done. So once I went to Chapman this past year, which I fully made that decision, you know what I'm saying? Based on me wanting to have more time with the brand and, you know, being able to do the stuff I wanted to do. What I would tell y'all, time and location freedom. Location at Chapman is fire. Chapman is a fire ass school, you know, great people, nice scenery, etc. And it gave me more time to work on my brand. So I made that decision to go to Chapman, a D3 school this past year for that reason. I did not go to Chapman, no disrespect at all, because D3 got hoopers up for sure, but I did not go to Chapman just because that was my only offer. So I wanted to clear that up too. I had a, actually had a D1 coach wanting to offer me the day I committed to Chapman. I'm not going to drop their name, but yeah, he's in my phone still. Like he wanted to get me on that business. Like, yo, I want you here next year, etc. D1 school, I committed to a D3. Once again, that doesn't make sense to the average person, but I knew my story was different. I felt like that's where God was guiding me. So long story short, once you put all, like, bro, I just summed that up in like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever. I'm still yapping, but I can tell that story. Like there's an hour or two worth of details that I'm not even including from adversity, good times, bad times, all that in between. I'm not even including that. So that's a 10 minute saga, basically. It's like, bro, when you go through all that on a day-to-day -day basis for years on end, it's like, Dog, I was burnt the fuck out this past year. I'm burnt out, bro. I put in everything I could to this game. And it's like, I'm not going to go overseas and start over, you know, and I'm at peace with that. Because, bro, you don't play JV as a junior and accomplish all I have in basketball. Like, you don't make it to a high level D2 with the possibility that you could have went D1. You don't become a Juco All-American when you play JV as a junior. Like, that's pretty much unheard of. So when you kind of like beating the odds, like no conceded, no bragging shit, but when you beat the odds... And like everybody's kind of looking over you and now you're like, oh, wow, this guy can actually hoop. This guy can play, you know, full ride scholarships, etc. It's like, you know what I'm saying? You either have to commit to that for life or it's like you get to the point like I've accomplished everything I want to. And I'm kind of burnt out. That was me. You know, and that's where we're at today. Next up, we got what is my favorite Bible verse? And I'm not someone who my bad. If that's not the question is what's one verse that keeps you grounded. So I kind of alternate verses like when I try to go through the Bible. I'm not going to lie, y'all. 
Like, I'm not capping to you. Like, I'm not going to make myself seem like I'm better than I am. But my Bible has dust on it. Like, I haven't read my Bible in, like, a month and a half. Like, that's bad, bro. That's bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, but this is the transparent conversation, bro. I'm never going to flex to y'all that I'm, like, some upstanding guy. And, you know, I'm a role model. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not a role model, bro, like, at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a dude out here living. And, you know, I'm trying to put my best foot forward and honor God at all times. But I fall short. Bro, my Bible has literal dust on it. However, one verse that, you know, kept me going, especially when I was playing basketball and even now, it's that Psalm 118, verse 6. It's um, what can mere mortals do to me, you know what I'm saying? And it's basically like, let me get the full verse right quick. Yeah, it's the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And I feel like that's such a raw verse. Like, that sounds so raw. Like, it just makes me want to get it, like, tatted. But, um you know, God is with you. There's nothing to fear. It's that simple. Like, that's why it's important to fear God. Because if you fear God, and fear God isn't even like being like afraid of God. Like, it's more like respect and admiration. You know what I'm saying? And being humble before God. But if you fear God, you don't have to fear anything else. And that's powerful. When you fear God and you rocking with God, you rocking with Jesus, you don't got to fear nothing else. Because it's like, if God's with me and he's writing my story, God's playing my work, the name on the brand that I got, you know what I'm saying? It all, it all ties in together, you feel me? But when God's with you, bro, like, you don't have to be afraid of them. Like, if I got the most powerful entity that is beyond even human comprehension or human, the human, the human imagination within me, rocking with me, I'm scared of a mortal. I'm scared of another human. I'm scared of an earthly situation. Nah, dog. Nah. And of course, like I said, I'm not saying I'm I'm human. Like, I'm human, obviously. I'm not saying I don't have fear. I don't have anxiety. I don't have any. Of course, those are natural human emotions. But going into a big game, you know what I'm saying? Going into a big drop, real life shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, some, some real life shit, family, people dying, etc. It's like, yes, you're going to go through the pantheon of human emotion. However, if you know that God is with you, you have that relationship with him, and Jesus is like, you can go through anything. Bro, trust, I've been on my last more than once. Been on my last tears and eyes, not knowing what step to take, not knowing what my future is going to look like. You know what I'm saying? This person passes away, etc. A lot of personal shit that's happened, just like anybody else, you know? But if you got God with you, you know he's going to bring you through. And that's a walk. I'm a walking testimony, bro. Like, even just the basketball situation I gave y'all. Like, basketball in the grand scheme of things is not that important, bro. Like, compared to a lot of real life stuff and family and all that. But even just in that story, y'all can see, like, that's God. Dog, I'm not, I'm not, I was not supposed to be where I ended up at. I'm not supposed to be here where I'm at today, living great. You know what I'm saying? And yes, I have my trials and tribulations and challenges just like anybody else. But I'm not supposed to be where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? Based on where I was five years ago. That's me putting in work and that's God. That's God's plan, my work. Once again, the name of the brand. That's why I started the brand too. Like, I didn't even know what I wanted to do with the brand at first, but I knew that name. You know what I'm saying? That's something me and my friend would be saying to each other. Um, shout out to Solo. Some me and my friend would be saying back in like middle school. And I'm like, God's plan, my work. It's the same thing, bro. Like, and that's why that Bible verse sticks out to me. Because if you rocking with God, you rocking with Jesus, bro. And you rocking with somebody that paid the ultimate sacrifice for you. It's like everything else is light. Like you telling me some man died for me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody died for me. Who else you know died for you? Who laid down their life first. And he was perfect. He laid down his life for somebody who's not. Not even somebody. He laid down his life for everybody that's not. Me personally, I'm not laying down for y'all motherfuckers. I'm not dying for y'all. Being real. I'm not dying for y'all. I'll die for my loved ones any day of the week. I'm not dying for a random person. I'm not dying for my enemies. I'm not dying for people I don't rock with, etc. He did that. So, bruh, that's the, that's the greatest act of selflessness. That's the greatest act of courage. That's the greatest act of, you know, facing humiliation ever. So that's why that verse means something to me. And a lot of verses are like that, where it's like, bro, if I have God with me and I got the relationship, which I need to continue to hone in and be better at, that's on me. But if I have that and God's working through me, bro, everything else is light. Making the money I want to make is light. Being able to inspire people is light. Going through challenges and tribulations is light. You know what I'm saying? That's just the mindset I got with that. Switching the subject up a little bit. Favorite NBA players growing up. 
Um, Iverson for sure. Iverson, my favorite player, damn near of all time. Um, just so raw, bro. The swag, the, the the swag, dog. The swag. This motherfucker is my height, five eleven, going up against seven footers and averaging thirty a game. And led his team to the to the championship, to the championship game, bro. And faced a prime, not a prime, but he faced a prime Kobe and Shaq duo. Like, they don't make them like that no more. My height, 5'11", doing that, NBA? Nah, bro. Iverson's probably that. I mess with Steph, of course. He changed the game for sure. Um, I, I think Jordan is a GOAT. You know what I'm saying? That's a real unpopular opinion among people my age. But Jordan is a GOAT, bro. Like, the aura, the dominance, the skill, the way he changed, like, I feel you had to have been there to really recognize that. Of course, I wasn't there. I wasn't born yet. But, like, going back and watching his games, like, he always hooped. Like, you can't say that about nobody else. Like, he always hooped, bro. Like, no offense. You can't say that about Bron. Love Bron. I think Bron's a great player. You know, I'm not one of these Jordan's great, LeBron's so No, nah, LeBron's a GOAT in his own right. Playing 20-plus years. Like, that's crazy. But... Jordan with that killer instinct, like, bro, you just, he hooped every game. And somebody who plays sports, you know how hard that is to be great every game. Like, that's crazy. You know, Kobe, great. I mean, all the greats, bro. I don't even got a favorite, like, player damn near. I don't even got a favorite team for sure. It's like, I'm just an admirer of greatness. And I tried to take something from everybody's game when I was playing. So, yeah, but I'll say Iverson, though. Like just a dog, bro. Just a dog. That's why we're number three, too. Like, that's why I started, at least. What music do you listen to, and do you have a Spotify? I don't have a Spotify. I'm an Apple Music guy. Um, That's kind of controversial, but, yeah. Apple Music, at McKellery, of course, bro. All my all my socials are at McKellery. I do have, like, a play. I have playlists, bro, but I don't even be updating them. What's kind of weird is, like, from the music I listen to, like, I'm, I'm weird with the music, bro. Like, I'll listen to, like, that new Future and Metro, and then I'll turn on some, like, Lana Del Rey, like, back-to-back. -back. Like, I used to be an all-rap guy, all R&B, but, you know, I ventured out, and, like, bro, there's some hits, bro. Like, y'all steady on the rap, bro. Like, you need to go over to Lana Del Rey and, you know what I'm saying, Frank Ocean, you know, like, bro. Especially when I moved out to California and I'm driving down the beach and I'm, like, I used to dream about this, dog. I used to have visions. I used to be in my bedroom in the middle of the cornfields in Iowa. I used to be back at the crib. You know what I'm saying? No offers, no none, no anything to my name, bro. And I'll just be dreaming about California. And I'll be dreaming about what the scenery look would look like. And I'll be dreaming about my life. And, like, when you listen to those songs, that's not just rap songs, but you listen to those songs like Lana Del Rey or Frank or I'm missing a bunch of people. It's like... That type of like calm, chill vibe, it's like, damn, this shit feel like a movie. So definitely encourage y'all, bro, to check out Lana. If y'all boys ain't on Lana, bro, I don't know what you're doing because you listen to her, your whole vibe just changed. You listen to Frank, your whole vibe just changed. Speaking of that, like, I don't know if y'all know, like, or if y'all think Frank dropping again. I think he gonna drop, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I got, I got money on him dropping for sure, so... Have you ever thought about collabing with another brand? Yeah, I do want to collab with another brand, maybe at the end of this year. Um, I actually had the opportunity to collab with a, another brand um, that's kind of similar to ours, that's a little bit bigger, but I turned it down. I just wanted to build GPMW's brand identity first. One, I'm not looking to ride nobody's coattail to the top. I'm not looking to ride nobody's coattail to getting more sales or getting a name out there. Like, that's not what I'm about. Um, but yeah, I, I would be down to do it. You know what I'm saying? For sure. It just depends on the brand. But I think that would be dope. But like I said, right now, GPMW is still kind of at the beginning stages. And we got so much planned, bro, to drop. Like, I got so much planned. Like, I got stuff all the way until the winter time for right now. And it's April. So I got so much stuff that I just want to get in the works, get in y'all's hands. Like, y'all know the quality crazy. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to have as much stuff ready to ship as possible, too. So y'all don't got to wait. Um... So, yeah, like I said, we'll see about the collab. I definitely want to do it. I think it would be dope as long as it's the right person. But ultimately, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we got some work to do first. All right, this video is kind of getting lengthy already. But we're going we gonna to answer one or two more. And then, um, like I said, I'll probably do one of these videos every couple weeks, bro, to be honest. Or, like, once a month, definitely. Because I enjoy y'all asking questions and me being able to provide, like, 
my answers to them. Right now, like this first video, you know, it's more so just me like breaking down like my life and like my details and stuff, just so y'all can know me better. But going forward, like y'all got questions or whatever, I'll definitely uh, do my best that I do the best that I can to help. Okay, so um, what inspired you um, to start making content? So, like I said, I started making content. I started making content while I was at JUCO. Honestly, it's funny. It's funny as hell because if you look up my name on TikTok and then you go like JUCO or whatever, I was doing like day in the life of a JUCO hooper my second year there, and that's back when TikTok like nobody was really on TikTok. Like that's when like people were actually like getting like TikTok famous for real because you would post a video and it would get like 20k views off the bat, and like there'd be videos you know it would be common to get like hundreds of thousands of views on vids like just easily. So I started posting vlogs back when I was in JUCO just showing people like what I was like what my day to day looked like and a lot of people started following me from that and I start I kept doing that while I was at um Azusa Pacific when I moved out to California. Like the brand I was running in the past, um that shit fell apart. That's a long story, fell apart, broke down. So I had taken a I had taken a break from content to do the brand. So when that fell apart, um late September, I I literally hopped on TikTok the next day. You know what I'm saying? Cause I had I had more time now. You know what I'm saying? I was like kind of looking a way to get my mind off that shit, etc. I was like, let me just create. Also, too, that's a great point. Whenever you down bad or whatever, or just like in a funk or whatever, it doesn't really matter what the situation is, bro. The answer is always to create. Like, yes, there are certain times in life you do need to sit back. You know what I'm saying? Observe some shit, but. Most of the time, bro, creating is going to get you to that next level. Even when you don't think you have anything to create, like I'm telling you, it doesn't even have to be videos or TikTok or anything. Like you can choose whatever you want to create in this world, whether it's like art, drawing, music, doesn't matter. Videos like create over consume, bro. I try to remind myself of that every day. Like, bro, I'll be scrolling TikTok for a couple hours sometimes. And I'm like, dog, what did I just watch? I probably just watched like 400 videos and like maybe like 10 of them had value and the rest are just bullshit. Just mind numbing iq lowering content you know what i'm saying so create over consume bro so either way i was trying to get my mind up some shit you know what i'm saying i had some free time started posting vids vlogs bro just every day like i would just speak over what i was doing like got up this morning like <laughs> they all sounded the same so i'd be like yo woke up this morning around eight took a shower ate breakfast like yada 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 and i was I'm not going to take credit, but I'm going to take credit, bro. I was like the first college athlete doing day in the life and vlogs on TikTok. Book it. Book it. Go back on TikTok and try to find somebody who's doing it consistently before me. I was the first person doing the first athlete. I can say in the history of the world, I was the first athlete on TikTok doing day in the life consistently. That's crazy, bro. Like I was really doing that shit consistently before anybody else. So... I, I, my bad. I had a little pop my shit right there because you know what I'm saying. It's like I was the first, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, I was the first person really doing that. And like I said, I was just creating. I didn't even want nothing from it. Um, keep in mind though, the NIL stuff passed the next year after I started doing it. So I'm like, ooh, if I keep doing it, I can land some deals. I never landed any NIL deals strictly because of basketball. Like, no offense, D2. Like, most people don't care. I mean, maybe you could partner with a local restaurant, but nobody's paying a D2 basketball player, at least back then, from my from my knowledge. Maybe it's changed now, but nobody was giving, like, NIL deals to D2 hoopers. And it's funny, too, because everybody who was back, everybody back then in the NIL scene thought that, oh, when it's, once they pass NIL, like, an athletes can get paid. We're all going to be rich dog like unless you had millions of followers or like you was like the best at your craft you was not getting a cent so my dad dropped a cold ass one-liner that stuck with me for life he said because i was talking about nil deals i'm like i gotta be able to leverage this platform to make money you know what i'm saying he told me like you know create your own nil deal and that shit was facts so i really just started grinding on the content you know what i'm saying grinding on the vlogs, et cetera. And to this day, over the past two years, I've probably signed over like eight, eight or 10 um, brand deals. I mean, you can consider them NIL because I'm an athlete or was an athlete, but mostly they're just brand deals um, and they pay well, bro. They pay well. So anybody who got some free time on their hands, like I'm telling you, even if you don't think people will care, like start creating, bro. Like you never know who's watching you. Like I never thought I'd have like any type of platform or nothing, but 
you know, it's different when people hitting you in the DMs or the comments saying like, yo, you're so inspiring or oh, yo, bro, you changed my life. Like, that shit's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy to think that somebody from across the country or across the world or some like 13 year old or some 30 year old could be like, yo, you're helping me live better. or You're helping to inspire me on a day to day. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So you never know the positive impact you can have. So I definitely recommend that at least try to create, you know what I'm saying? And see what, see what stems from it. But yeah, so my dad told me to create my own NIL deal. To this day, I'm still getting brand deal opportunities. And because I've honed in on my craft, you know, a lot and been consistent, the numbers are up there, bro. Like, I'm not going to go into specifics, but they pay well, especially when you have other brand deals under your belt that you can kind of use as leverage. So I did, in a way, create my own NIL deal. I don't know a lot of D2 hoopers or anybody at the D2 level or even people at the low D1 level that can say they cashed out um, more than more than that, honestly. So you know, something that started off is me just kind of playing around, creating, kind of trying to get my mind off some things actually led to me making X amount of money. But more importantly, being able to inspire people from across the country, across the world to help me, you know what I'm saying? Um, start my brand, you know, and we're still building. Now I'm going full time content and doing this YouTube thing like that all stemmed from back me making videos back on TikTok and having that experience. So, um, yeah, I started it, you know, kind of in a little bit of a not a dark place trying to be dramatic but it kind of like got a whatever like it is what it is and that first week i saw like the responses from people and i'm like damn okay people messing with it who am i to not give the people what they want so so yeah man so yeah man that's the first q a sesh i appreciate y'all so much i know that video was lengthy um, but maybe y'all want longer videos. I don't know. I don't know what the people want, but, um, like I said, I'm definitely going to try to do these once a month. So just leave comments, um, leave questions in the comments or just hit me in the DM. Damn near like falling asleep right now, bro. I'm like my eyes look like I'm high, but I'm not. But, um, yeah, either way, it was a blast. Hit me with any questions, any time. I'm gonna try to compile another, you know what I'm saying? Video soon and more vlogs on the way, more stuff for the brand on the way. I mean, we living, bruh, like we blessed, like we out here and yeah, I'll catch y'all next time. I'm so hungry, about to get some dinner, deuce.